I'm not behind. You're behind. Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be doing my March wrap up and you guessed it, I, I started the month behind and I'm ending the month uh, a bit behind as well. But it's gonna be okay. We're gonna talk through and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get it figured out. <laughs> so first of all, uh, we'll go with what I was still finishing up uh, at the end of February. And the first one of those books is Magician, the first book in the Rift War Saga by Raymond E. Feist. Uh, I, I had finished about half of this before the month, and man, that feels like so long ago. Um, so the first thing I finished the other half of this, uh, this was just excellent. It definitely started out the the month uh, on a very good note. Uh, I, I really enjoyed this, just great classic fantasy. Um, and I'm really excited to, to get to the next two books. Uh, this is technically the first two books in one. Uh, but I, I am really excited for Silverthorn and A Darkness of Sethanon to continue. I do have a full review for Magician if you want to hear more about my thoughts here. Uh, but like I said, really, really great classic fantasy. I just enjoyed the heck out of this, even though it was not at all what I was expecting. Uh, and I actually did a lot of things differently uh, and focused more on like a large scale, scale war over many years versus being like, you know, your classic coming of age type thing. So really great book and was excited by that. Then speaking of classic fantasy, uh, the very next thing that I then did, and I was doing this one uh, on audio, uh, and it's it's the first book I think that I you know had completely finished on audio. I did I only read like a few pages of it uh, in the actual book, but that was Quest for Lost Heroes by David Gemmel. So this is and. So I started with Legend, and so chronologically going from there, this is the third book um, when you're going after Legend. They start to get where some of them are chronologically much, much uh, older in time, but I'm just kind of reading in this order because that's how I started. Uh, and Quest for Lost Heroes definitely did not disappoint. I really, really enjoyed this book. It uh, follows, uh, which isn't all that surprising because it's Gamma, but it follows a bunch of basically uh, heroes who are kind of older and they're redundant now. Uh, and at the back, it mentions in the note that basically the, the base inspiration for this is uh, David Gemmel lost his job and was made redundant and was just kind of feeling useless and looking for something else. And so his uh, editor told him like, well, hey, why don't you channel that and write some books? And so we did. So we have these heroes who they're, they're older. They're not necessarily in their prime anymore. They're still really good at what they're doing. Uh, and uh, they kind of just are, are desperate to, to do something and to kind of like relive their glory days. So this this is a quest book, but it's also like almost a parody on the, the quest trope in general because we see them and they're going on this quest and there's even kind of a joke in there because it's they're not like going off to rescue a princess uh, and save her from a dragon or anything like that. Like, nope, they're going to uh, rescue a pig farmer's daughter um, <laughs> and to help a boy whom she never really cared about anyway, uh, but promised that he would try. And so it's, it's just kind of this like whole thing. And they even make jokes about how it's kind of a sad excuse for a quest, but it just worked so well, the characters and the way they went together and, and really this, this whole story. And this is only like a, a 300 page book. And I, I just feel like Gamble has improved. So I really liked Legend. I felt like I could have used some more pages because parts felt rushed. Uh, King Beyond the Gate, I also really liked. But Quest for Lost Heroes, uh, I think definitely is probably my favorite so far because I, I just really, really loved it. And it, it told a very complete story, did it very well, and did not feel rushed despite being 300 pages. This also just like solidified. Uh, Sean Barrett, who narrates this, is amazing, and I love him. And he fits Gamel and the characters so, so well. So I had a, I had a lot of fun with that. Uh, and as we'll, we'll talk about uh, in a short while... Um, it'll, it'll make more sense too, uh, <laughs> with some other things. But then next up after that was Blood of Dragons, the final book, finally, in the Rain Wild Chronicles. Oh, man, I, uh, I've mentioned it a couple times, but I just was not at all enjoying the, the Rain Wild Chronicles. I, I really, really did not really care for this. This was better uh, than probably any of the others. There was finally some stuff going on. There were a few things I liked, but it just still was, 
It was too little too late. I just didn't really care. I, I, I'm not going to get rid of the, the books. I'm going to keep them for my collection, but I will not probably ever read these books again. Uh, I, I will definitely reread the rest of the series probably many times, especially the fifth book. This series, not so much. It did provide some, you know, background, and it did have somewhat of a story to tell, but I think it really just comes down to it's four books. Everything else is trilogies of long books, but this is four books, and it was supposed to be two. So the first two are basically just one really long, drawn-out plot point, and then the second two are shorter and are kind of trying to, you know put all the other stuff that didn't happen throughout where we've got multi POVs and other stuff going on and I just didn't really care. So this was like, I mean, it, it, it was better than the others, but it was still pretty mad. I, I, I just didn't particularly care about it at all. After that, though, I, I read something that I, I really had a lot of fun with on the old Kindle, which was An End to Sorrow by Michael R. Fletcher. And just let's take a moment to look at that cover because that cover is awesome and I love that cover. Uh, and this was an e-arc uh, that I got as a part of a, a group read over on Slowly Red server, and I will link out his channel down below. I was super excited uh, to get this because I've talked to Fletcher, and he's awesome, and I really like the first two books, and I was so curious uh, how he was going to end it. Even reading this, I'm like, I'm almost done. How is this going to end? And I was so, in, in so invested, and the way he does it, of course, no spoilers, uh, but the way he does it is fantastic. Uh, we'll be doing at some point uh, a, a kind of a, a live video uh, with some other people too to talk about this. So I, I don't want to get into any big details, um, but uh, watch out for that. That'll be coming a, a little bit down the line, and I'm really excited to talk more about it because uh, it's just the way the the, the way it, the the whole series, the trilogy was really really good, and the ending. Uh, it I, I feel like it could be controversial for some, but it worked for me. It really really did uh, for me. So that was then that one. So the next up, I read Illborn, which was another pretty meh uh, book for me uh, by Daniel T. Jackson. This is a debut, and so I feel like I'm, I gave it the benefit of the doubt with some, but I just really didn't care about anything in this book. I had a lot of complaints, and I didn't really care about anything, so this ended up being like a two and a half uh, as well. I do have a full review that's pretty ranty about this. Like I said, it's not a bad book. It just really didn't do it for me at all. Uh, which is unfortunate. I know a lot of people loved this, uh, but if you do want to hear more about my thoughts about it, uh, definitely check that out. I'll link that review down below as well. Then, jumping back into the uh, positive, uh, The Great Hunt was our book this month for March for The Great Wheel of Time reread. I kept going with the audio on this one, uh, just because, like I've mentioned before, I've read this series so many times, and with Eye of the World, I missed reading it. I missed holding the book, reading it the way I read it, even though the audio is very good. This book, though, really showed me why people love the audio so much, because we started expanding, we were seeing more people with different accents, and there are scenes I read a dozen times, but... Hearing the way it was done with the audio just made it almost like even more fun and more new. So I, I'm really impressed uh, with Michael Kramer uh, and Kate Reddington this one a little bit more. I think she'll be in a lot more tour later on. Uh, but specifically with some of the scenes uh, in this book in Kyrian uh, and uh, as well with uh, another group of people who have, are very heavily accented. The way he does it was just fantastic, so I enjoyed it. I did do uh, a full uh, kind of... Um, I'm pretty sure I did both some spoilers and some not spoilers for this book, but I will link that video uh, down below as well. It's, of course, it's a Wheel of Time book. You know I loved it, uh, but it's been really fun uh, going and talking about each individual book as we read it as well, so I've been having a great time with that. Uh, the next thing I then read was Jade City. Uh, I just put the review out for this. This came out on just a Friday. This will be coming out on a Monday, uh, so I'll link that down below as well. This I had been kind of putting off toward the end of the month because I was so worried I wasn't going to like it. That ended up being for nothing because although I, I didn't think this was like a great book, it was pretty solid. Uh, I did enjoy it. Uh, and I think it has the potential to get quite a lot better as it goes along. And I think the people who are really obsessed with this are obsessed with it because of the things that happen in books two and three. It's just what I'm assuming. Uh, but I, I like this. I had a pretty good time with it. It was uh, different than what I was expecting because I feel like a lot of people talk about the elements with like 
the, the gangsters and the mafia kind of feel. And there's there's a lot more going on. And this does a ton of world building of not just the country where this is taking place, but their history, kind of the military history of what's happened, the geopolitical situation, uh, the, I mean, the current different political undercurrents going on. So there's a lot more to this that I wasn't really expecting because that's those aren't the things people talk about. I really like a lot of those things. Uh, the, so uh, I found this to be a lot more balanced than I thought, although it took a while to get me pulled in. Uh, I am interested and will be continuing with the series. So that gets us to the present, unfortunately, since I still have a couple of books left here. Uh, but I'm filming this on the 31st, so it is the, the last day of March, and so I, I have some other things to talk about. I am right now reading on my Kindle uh, The Hunger of the Gods, which is book two in the Bloodsworn Saga uh, by John Gwynn. I will finish that tonight. So that will actually be done uh, by the end of the month, technically, because I don't have a ton left. But uh, that was supposed to be uh, the review video that was on last Friday, and I didn't get it done in time, so it'll now be this coming Friday. This one will come out, which is still before release. Uh, this is an ERC that I got through NetGalley. I was afraid I wasn't going to get approved, even though I got approved for the first one when I had, like, way less subscribers than I do now, uh, but it took a while, and, like, the U.S. seemed to get approved last, but I finally got it. I was really excited, and I've been enjoying it a lot so far. Uh, it did, There's and when I get to my review, I will talk about it um, a, a little bit more. Uh, of course, I won't be doing spoilers because it'll be pre-released, but I'll talk about it a little more then. Uh, there's one like big part of the premise thing it does and I'm just like it's kind of silly but it's also it's these books the, the first one was I felt uh, a little bit more grittier uh this is still very gritty but there's more humor and kind of other stuff going in and it's so interesting the way John Gwynn is writing these characters because this is an extremely different kind of story as Faithful and the Fallen it has an incredibly different feel in almost every way uh, and I think that's uh, part of why two people uh, were kind of mixed on Shadow of the Gods. A lot of people were expecting more Faithful in the Fallen. This is very, very, very different. Uh, but it's been really good so far, and I'm, I'm really excited to finish it out. I'm getting close. Uh, it's just, it's been compelling. Uh, lots of action, humor. Uh, just a lot of the stuff you expect from John Gwynn, just in a very different package, I should say. Also, at this point, I am still reading, well, I'm actually listening on audio because uh, I was just talking about how much I love Sean Barrett, the narrator, for uh, the Jornai Saga, Winter Warriors by David Gemmel. So after I finished, I ended up finishing The Great Hunt on audio a lot earlier than I thought I was, and so I'd kind of gotten into the habit of just like playing an audiobook when I like was doing something that I couldn't be physically reading, I'm doing it a little bit more, uh, and so I decided to just get this next book because I hadn't enjoyed Quest for Lost Heroes and audio so much. Uh, Winter Warriors also has been something I've meant to read for a really long time. I wasn't planning on doing a second Gemmel book this month, uh, I won't finish this for a little bit longer. I don't have a ton left. I think I, I'm under four and a half hours, but I don't usually have a ton of time to do audio. So I, I'm listening at like 1.2. I don't like to go any faster than that because Sean Barrett talks kind of slow. So 1.2 makes it a little more natural, uh, but it, it works in a great way. Uh, but I, I love his narration. This book has been good so far. Uh, it's it's a bit different than the other Janai books because we are specifically not just dealing with battles and old heroes. And of course, we're still, our main characters are uh, elderly soldiers uh, who are being sent home. But uh, it's a little more mystical when uh, we're looking at demons and fighting. And this was recommended to me a long time ago, actually before I'd read any Draenei. Uh, so it's been nice to finally get to this. And I've been having a good time with it as well. Uh, I might try to do a video where I talk about both Quest for Lost Heroes and Winter Warriors in more detail. Um, I haven't decided. Um, I try not to do combo books, but that's why I've spent a little more time talking about these in this wrap-up uh, because of the fact that I haven't done full reviews for them. But they've been a lot of fun. Uh, I, I still like Quest for Lost Heroes more, but there's been a lot of really good stuff in this. And this book has some just extremely poignant moments and these little, uh, just little vignettes almost where we're seeing a character like reminisce or like their internal monologue and it's just some of it hits really really hard and I think that's Gemmel does like to to use a lot of similar themes a lot of his books have a similar feel but the characters are, are very well defined uh, and they're not carbon copies at all they're, they're still very different people uh, with different thoughts and so he, he manages to have similar stories told at different times and with different characters but also enough to make it 
uh, different as well. And it always kind of at least a little bit ties together and, and seeing the way the world's going. So I really, really, really enjoyed Drenai and I can't wait to continue reading and finish. So that gets to the things that will not uh, be finished or even started uh, in March. First is The Poison Song by uh, Jen Williams, book three in Winnowing Flame. I have not enjoyed this series. I wanted the DNF in the middle of book two, uh, but it was uh, my man Drew's channel buddy read, and he had already DNF because he got to it before me, and so I'm like, I'll keep going just to support the buddy read. So I got through the second book. I didn't like it. Liked it less than the first. Not expecting to like this. Even uh, the people who were a little higher on it than me seemed to kind of think it was like, eh. So if I have to drop something, this will be it. But like, I do want to just finish it, I guess, just to be a completionist. But it's almost 600 pages of a book I know I'm not really going to care for. So we'll see. I don't know for sure. We'll see. The last one, though, I specifically was planning on this being the last book I read this month. So that's why I haven't read it yet, uh, which will be The Price of Spring, the fourth and final book of the Long Price Quartet. I'm really excited to read this. I've really, really enjoyed this series, uh, and the people who've already started it have just been raving. I uh, Even uh, some people who uh, didn't like some of the earlier books as much as I did were like, oh my gosh, this is so good. I cannot wait. So that's where it's hard to, to force myself to read a book I'm not going to like, just to when I know I could, could read The Price of Spring, which I know I'm going to enjoy. Uh, I, I've really been impressed with what Daniel Abraham has done in this series, and that's why when I read Age of Ash 2, I think I, I, I appreciated it a lot more because I knew what to expect from reading The Long Price Quartet and the kind of story he tells, which is not uh, a normal story, and I know The Long Price Quartet is one of those series that is not going to work for everyone because it's very different. Uh, very, very different from a lot of fantasy, but I, I've loved the way he's woven this. It's these slow, long style plots uh there were in the the third book had uh plots that went back to things that related all the way up to like the first book uh which is is crazy and i've heard that the fourth book does it even more so i am i'm just uh, probably unreasonably excited to get to it i can't wait so that though are all the books that i've read or plan to read and haven't yet gotten to in march um, so let me know your thoughts if you read any of these or if you had different thoughts or uh, let me know what you read in March as well. I'm hoping to really burn through these because I have a lot. If you saw my TBR video, I have a lot to hopefully get to in April. So I need to get caught up because I'm tired of being behind. I need to just finally get caught up so that I'm, I'm able to uh, <laughs> just get everything moving. There's so many books to read. I've been getting behind again. I might get to the point where I don't do TBRs for a while and just kind of try and, and, and read some stuff because my TBRs keep getting me behind. But anyway, so that, that's everything for March. Like I said, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Check the link in the description, as always, for the Wizardly Duo Discord. If you want to chat these books, any books, really anything at all, it's a lot of fun and we would love to have you. And of course, if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe.